By the end of this video, you're going to know exactly how to transform your relationship with money after narcissistic abuse. So make sure you stick around till the end of the video because this one is going to be a game changer for you. Let's dive in. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tammy M. Joyce. I'm the founder of Tammy M. Coaching and the creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss a new video. So let's talk about how to transform your relationship with money after narcissistic abuse. Unfortunately, financial abuse and narcissistic abuse often go hand in hand. Not always, but certainly often enough. And needless to say, being financially exploited and abused can be devastating on many levels. That's why in today's video, I'm going to give you a roadmap to taking your power back so you can change all of that for good. I'm going to share some mindset shifts you need to adopt in order to up level your internal reality from one of having been financially exploited, abused, and possibly even devastated to a place of being able to change your money game for the better and permanently. And believe me, I get it. You might be looking at your bank account right now after the fallout of yet another narcissistic relationship and it's not anywhere near where you want or need it to be. So how do we change that? How do we change our mindset from one of fear, lack, and scarcity into one of abundance and opportunity? Where do we even begin? Well, I believe this is a skill set that we can develop. And let's face it, very few of us were taught this skill set or anything else having to do with growing and developing our wealth consciousness. Like many life skills, we had to figure this one out on our own through trial and mountains of error. And that being the case, the first thing you want to do is number one, ask yourself the hard questions. That's right. Start asking yourself some hard questions like, for example, what exactly is my relationship with money? Is it healthy, thriving, peaceful, harmonious and abundant? Or is it based in fear, lack and scarcity? Is it a reflection of the devastation left behind as a result of the fallout of the narcissistic abuse you've endured throughout your life? Is it a reflection of the ways in which the narcissistic abuse annihilated your sense of self-worth and self-esteem? Be willing to ask yourself the tough questions and get dirt honest with yourself where your relationship with money is concerned. And believe me, I know how painful it can be to look this monster in the eye, but I assure you doing so will be the beginning of lasting change for you. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. And like they say, nothing changes if nothing changes. So tell yourself the dirt honest truth. And in doing so, what you're likely to discover is that what your beliefs are about money, both conscious and subconscious, and therefore what your financial reality looks like today is often very similar to that of your parents or primary caretakers. Meaning, there are some subconscious programs that need to be looked at and addressed if you want anything to change. And that doesn't happen by accident. We actually have to be willing to do the work in order for things to change. But the good news is, things can change dramatically and faster than you might imagine if you're willing to do the internal work to make it happen. And don't kid yourself. Healing your relationship with money is a real thing and a worthy endeavor for many reasons, not least of which being you deserve to be living a really good, abundant, peaceful, confident, and free life. And like it or not, down here on planet Earth, money's part of that equation, which brings me to my next point. Number two, accept that money is neither good nor bad. In order to transform your relationship with money, you have to recognize and accept that money in itself is neither good nor bad. Money just is. It's actually not that big of a deal. It's just a tool, a resource, an energy that can be used in the service of either good or bad. Not being able to buy the things or live the life you dream of living or even manage the essentials of daily life and survival without stress or struggle. None of this is actually money's fault. That reality has very little to do with money and a whole lot more to do with what's going on inside of us in terms of our actual sense of self-worth and any unresolved worthiness issues that we may still carry. 
Money's just sitting there waiting for you to get that stuff cleaned up so you can have a good relationship with it. True story. And again, money itself is simply a tool, a resource. That's all it is. It is not responsible for your happiness or any other outcome. But oddly enough, a lot of people in particular, people who struggle with money blocks and scarcity consciousness think, at least on some level, that if they can't buy the things they want to buy or do the things they want to do that require a financial investment in order to do them, then it must be money's fault. On a deep level, they carry the notion that money did that. Ridiculous, no? But this is how many of us have been programmed to think with a victim mentality, in particular when it comes to our finances. Now with that said, let me be clear. I know full well that people have been born into all kinds of different situations and circumstances, and for many of us, it's been really hard, this road we've had to travel. I get it, believe me, I know. You're looking at someone who has not only fully and completely been abandoned by her parents at a very young age, but was raised by her grandmother on a monthly welfare check. And thank God for her and that monthly check. I never went hungry or lacked for any of the vital essentials. With no input from either of my parents, my narcissistic family did manage to keep me alive, so I'll give them that. But I grew up in an environment steeped in scarcity along with all kinds of guilt, fear, and Irish Catholic shame, especially where the subject of money was concerned and my own worthiness and deservedness issues with regards to abundance. I grew up on all the classics. Money is the root of all evil. Rich people are crooked. They got rich by being corrupt. And one that really stuck, it takes money to make money. So naturally, if I didn't have money, which I didn't, then making it was going to be near impossible, right? And it took a little while for me to outgrow that one, I'm not gonna lie, along with all the reasons I didn't deserve to have money or nice things in general. So believe me, I get it. Not everyone was born on a level playing field where money is concerned. Many of you have lived through all manner of chaos, arguing and fighting while you were growing up, as well as having experienced extreme trauma around finances. And some of you repeated that subconscious pattern and programming in your adult relationships. This is a reality for a lot of people. The struggle has without question been real. Not being able to pay for the basic fundamentals or worse yet, medical bills or even just bills in general, to say that this is crippling would be a colossal understatement. So I fully get the degree to which this reality can be painful. But what I know for sure is this, it doesn't have to be this way moving forward. You can change the game for yourself and it's never too late. But how Tammy, how? Well, number three, Start talking about money. Get this taboo topic out of the closet and into the open where it belongs. You want to transform your relationship with money? Talk openly, honestly, appropriately for sure, but openly and honestly, first with yourself and then with safe others where appropriate. So many people are afraid to discuss money and all the high voltage stuff that goes along with it. And this fear of looking at it, discussing it, bringing it out into the open and getting real with it is the very thing that keeps you stuck in the subconscious programs of fear, lack, and scarcity. Worse yet, many people wear a mask and pretend that they don't have any issues with money. And so they sit in the background struggling with ongoing internal battles with themselves and yet on the outside they put on an act, a grand performance, living a lie and acting as if they have it all together when in reality they don't. And here's what's true about that. You can't have a healthy, functional, never mind productive, high vibing and abundant relationship with anything or anyone when it's all cloaked in a veil of secrets, denial and lies. Life doesn't work that way, friends. You need to start talking with your closest friends about this. What struggles they're going through? Is there anything that you can bounce off, share or learn together about finances and up-leveling your mindset to one of abundance and prosperity? You need to make this a topic that you're comfortable with, one where you're free and at peace enough to stand in your truth, your reality, 
as it is, whatever that looks like right now, while also getting really clear about what you want to manifest and create for yourself. You need to shift the energy you carry around the subject if you want anything to change. As long as it's taboo, as long as you treat your reality with money like a dirty little secret, money and all manner of abundance and prosperity will continue to elude you. So be brave enough to seek out and find a safe, soul aligned circle of people that you can trust, that you'll be able to speak openly and honestly about finances with, including any struggles or challenges as well as your goals, wishes, dreams and desires. Put it on the table, bring it out into the open, into the light of day and watch what happens. Now comment below and let me know whether or not you're finding value in this video. Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in one of my coaching programs, there's a link in the description below where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. Number four, track your finances. Now, this isn't about obsessing and feeling guilty, bad, shameful, or wrong about every penny you spend. It's about consciousness, awareness, clarity, honesty, taking full responsibility for your financial life. It's about adulting and getting clear about the truth of where you are and where you want to go so you can start to clean up whatever messes you may have swept under the rug or have hiding in the closet so you can start making progress in the direction of the financial freedom and empowerment you want for yourself. Again, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. So start by taking a solid inventory of where you're at. Put it on an Excel or Google spreadsheet. List out all of your expenses, track them to the penny along with your income. Spend at least 10 to 15 minutes or more every day doing this so you stay awake, aware and conscious in this area of your life. But don't stop there. Make a list of all unfinished business and outstanding bills and debts you have. List them in order of priority from the lowest to the highest, then work toward paying the smallest ones off first. This will quickly give you a sense of accomplishment where your finances are concerned and it'll motivate you to keep going. Number five, give money away. I know what many of you may be thinking, what the hell is this woman talking about? I don't even have enough money to pay my bills. Why on earth would I give money away? I get it. I've been there. Hear me. You've probably heard some sort of organizations, oftentimes religious organizations, saying that you should be giving money away. Christian organizations often talk about tithing 10% of your income. Pillars of Islam talk about giving away 2.5% of your possessions as part of zakat. And some people think that if these organizations say, give that money away, you have to give it exactly to those specific places. And naturally, given the state of affairs on our planet and the truths and realities that are coming to light, for many of us, that can feel like anything but aligned and congruent, even if we can afford to tithe. The truth is, you can't afford not to tithe. Here's the thing. It's not about giving to one specific organization or group, religious or otherwise. It's about the fundamental metaphysical principle of putting out into the universe what we want to attract and doing so from a place of faith and knowing that the universe has our back. It's more about the feeling that you get whenever you engage in this sort of a practice than how much or where the money is actually going. Because once you start trusting and freely allowing money to circulate and flow, as opposed to gripping onto it so tightly while simultaneously carrying a frequency of fear, lack and scarcity, you're literally telling the universe that you are at the very least willing to be aligned to the frequency of abundance. The frequency of more than enough, not to mention the fact that it just feels good. One of my favorite organizations to support is a dog shelter here in Mexico. We connected with them as a result of wanting to help a street dog ourselves. Here's my Daisy the day after we quite literally rescued her off the streets. And here she is now six months later. Daisy picked me out of a crowd on the street. She knew she needed help. And I believe somehow she knew I could and would help her. Helping Daisy led us to connecting with the rescue organization where we live here in Mexico. 
an organization so overwhelmed that they couldn't take her. So my husband agreed to let me keep her and we've been donating to the organization every month ever since. The reality is I can't save all of them, but I did save one and I'm doing what I can for the others. And let me tell you, every time I see a dog on the street, my heart aches and breaks for sure. But at least by giving what I can where I can, I know I'm part of the solution. I'm doing what I can to make a difference in a way that matters. And that's a really good feeling. And believe me, a little can go a long way. Now, this is my story. It doesn't have to be yours. The point is you have to start asking yourself what makes you feel good. Maybe it's paying one of your grandmother's bills every single month to ensure that she lives more comfortably and affordably. Or if there's a food bank down the street you want to support, help others, that's a good way to go. Maybe that's your jam. Even just supporting them a little bit to whatever degree you can manage today is going to be enough to not only make you feel good about yourself, it will absolutely shift your own frequency around your feelings of lack to that of feeling more abundant. The act of giving is a simple way to reinforce positive emotions around your finances in general. And the good that this tool, this resource we call cash, is actually able to do. The more that you're able to create good feelings around money, especially when you can muster the faith and confidence to give what you can to a worthy cause and make a positive difference, and the more you can do so consistently, the faster you'll be able to heal your relationship with your finances. So find organizations that make you feel good whenever you give to them. Whatever you can manage in a month is plenty. Remember, it's the act of faith and the good feelings it generates. The good feelings associated with sharing what you do have with worthy causes. These are the feelings that you want to generate within yourself as consistently as you can. And in time, you'll likely find that you're able to give away a little bit more and a little bit more as you start attracting, creating, and generating more and more money for yourself. I assure you, there is no better feeling. And with that, I'm going to call it a wrap, but don't stop now. I have well over a hundred more videos right here on YouTube for you to watch to help you better understand the detrimental effects of narcissistic abuse. And more importantly, learn what you need to do now to heal from the abuse. So you can start living a better life, your best life in peace, confidence, freedom, and abundance. And if you want to go deeper with me, go to TammyMCoaching.com and learn about my unique tried and true process garnered over decades of experience and learn how you can become my client.